Uh, my name is uh, Masoud Asani, as you heard, uh, from Afghanistan. I've, I lived there uh, till I was uh, 14 years, and then I lived in uh, uh, I lived in uh, Uzbekistan, in, uh, in Pakistan, and finally uh, became a Dutch uh, citizen. So I'm living now in Holland. I'm going to talk uh, first uh, about uh, my uh, cooking project. Uh, at the second uh, year of uh, of school, I uh, kind of started to do some research about uh, Afghanistan and the culture because it's really uh, traditional and really inspiring, but n nobody knows about this kind of uh, traditions. So uh, I started uh, to research about food, and uh, at then I was actually second year or something, and I went uh, to Lidway. <laughs> I told her, I want to make a cooking book. And she said, oh yeah, but it's not the not time. We said, yeah. I think it's now the time because it should be. And uh, finally, uh, uh, one year later, I kind of made a very small one for a foundation. It's uh, Stechting Ariana. They're uh, funding uh, Afghan uh, women in, in Kabul. And they're kind of selling this book to, to fund uh, their uh, university projects. And so I got inspired by Afghan cooking. And then I, uh, I uh, began to graduate, so I thought, uh, I want to translate some techniques, some Afghan technique, cooking techniques, to modern products. So this is uh, this is called uh, cell cooking. The first uh, dish is uh, it's made from uh, iron, and I was inspired by uh, cooking with the sand. In Afghanistan, we have big ovens full, full with the hot sand. We hotten it till uh, four or five hundred degrees, and then we pour it over uh, meals, and then it cooks. So in this pan, I translated uh, sand and, uh, and pebbles. So you put this pan on fire, uh, and ten, within 10 minutes, it gets hot, also uh, uh, about uh, 400 degrees. And then you can actually dig uh, the meals inside of the sand, and it gets very fast cooked. And it's really um, uh, delicious as well. And th uh, this is uh, a pan that you can uh, bake bread in four minutes. It's inspired by tandoori. And this is a dish that you can uh, wash your hands on the table, actually. Because a lot of people, they don't get the time to go to the toilet to wash their hands. But it's better to, uh, you can do it now on, to uh, on, the, on the table. Uh, this is actually a fruit juicer. Uh, in Afghanistan, we have a lot of uh, watermelons. So we are kind of addicted to eat uh, watermelons after our uh, uh, dinner. But a lot of people, they don't know that uh, in watermelons, there's a lot of water. About 95% water, so here you can put them in and then juice it. You just press it and you have like two to two to, to three uh, liters of uh, water. A very fresh one as well. And uh, so that was the uh, first project, and this is uh, my second project. It's about uh, a toy that I used to use when I was a kid. Uh, I brought uh, some pieces of it. This is actually the initial uh, uh, design. I used to make these kind of uh, folding things. This, it's made from A4 paper together with, with my brother. So it works uh, basically like this. So you put it on the ground. So in, in Afghanistan, it's really windy. So if the wind is blowing, <laughs> so it's kind of rolling, you know. But if there's wind, they kind of roll around and then they never stop, kind of. But in our, uh, in our, <laughs> in our region, uh, where, where I left, it was uh, Kabul at the north side of uh, the town, and there were a lot of uh, landmines. So in our neighborhood, uh, so the soldiers or armies, they kind of trained uh, there. They, when they left, they left also a lot of landmines and explosives be behind. So we kind of played with these uh, explosives, actually. And this is a picture. It reminds me always uh, the school, because we, uh, we learned at school the type of the mines to, to recognize them. And this is the <coughs> main, main dangerous one. It's uh, anti land an anti land mine, uh, anti personal land mine. Sorry, <laughs> and it's really small. It's uh, it's about this big, and it weighs almost 13 grams or something. And the most uh, and the most uh, people or most guys who hurt or kids and animals. Uh, I mean. Uh, not, not the people who actually, that they want to actually hurt. 
uh, landmines are uh, like in this kind of fields. And in these fields, there are also a lot of minerals and that kind of stuff. And they're all buried un underneath the landmines. This is the, the map of the world now. Okay. There's uh, about 20 million only in Angola. And in total, there are about 270 million. This is the map of Angola. The red is all landmines. The occupied place in Angola, it's as big as like 15 times Holland. So that's uh, really ridiculous. And 20 million landmines, 12 million people, so there's two, million, two mm, landmines per person. So it's as big as Holland in 15 times. This is Afghanistan, all red part is uh, occupied landmines. This is the, at the border of uh, Pakistan, and about 10 million ones. So if we put all these uh, occupied uh, affected locations together, we will create a lost planet. I mean, a uh, uh, continent that we don't use, actually. And everybody's kind of talking, oh, yeah, we need two or three worlds. But we don't use uh, <coughs> our own in a really good way. So and, uh, nowadays, they are using this kind of uh, machines, like uh, big, uh, big tanks, also animals, rats, and dogs. But it goes very, it goes re or I mean, it works really, really slow. For one football field, they need a couple of months. So if we are talking about 1.2 million square meters, kilometers in Angola, they will need a couple of centuries. So <coughs> my childhood toys. Uh, this is uh, mm, also one of them, like this. And so when I graduated, began to graduate, so I've made them, and I researched about the uh, hurt, uh, fire, and this and that. So I, and the fire, uh, the the wind was the most uh, interesting one, actually. So I used that, and then I thought, OK, when I lived in Afghanistan, we lived in an affected area. So now I want to make the same toys, but in a bigger scale. This was an idea sketch. So I want to make this kind of balls, which are moved by the wind, and they have a GPS uh, chip in inside it. So if they are moving around, <coughs> and they are detonating landmines, uh, so every, everything will be captured. So then, <coughs> as a final project, I've made uh, the final uh, piece. And I tested also. This is the first uh, test, actually. There was a pressure test, test. So every landmine needs about five kilograms to press, and then it detonates. Oh, yeah. I have uh, the, the foot of one, of one landmine. It works the same as a human foot. So we are walking, so we are pressing. So this is also walking and pressing. So one ball has about 220 of these legs. And it depends how strong is a landmine. Then, it's, so it's, if it's about 35 grams, it destroys only a couple of uh, legs. <coughs> if it's a, like a tank man, it's going to be, it will be gone, actually. And, this is the, and the white one is actually a tripwire landmine ball. This is uh, how, it, how it works. And this was uh, our last uh, test session with the, with the Dutch defense. Uh, because we want to know how, how, what's the crash test uh, effects actually. And this was, uh, this is the 100 grams, so it's actually deadly for a person. In this case, also also for the ball. Uh, it has a GPS uh, chip inside it, so this is the website that I'm working on it. So you can see all kind of information about landmines. So you can locate, uh, select an area, and you can see where are the the balls. All these uh, green market uh, locations are the safe areas. So it's kind of calculating and giving you information. And you can walk with your iPhone app in this, kinda in this area. And the costs, uh, so worldwide there are 20, 70, 270 million. It costs about $1,200 per mine. And total, there would be like 3 mi uh, milliard. So we need actually a couple of Mark Zuckerbergs or uh, Bill Gates, because they have a lot of free money. So to, because, uh, otherwise, no government will invest in this kind of projects. So Angola would be about 24 billion, Afghanistan about 12 billion to clear them up. The cost of one mine kafon to uh, put, this, put them next to each other, one mine kafon costs about 40 bucks, 40 dollars. 
It can detonate more, uh, la about 10 landmines, so the costs are about 10 euros, 10 dollars. It's uh, 20 times, 20, 120 times cheaper. So we are saving like 90% of uh, our investment. So one mine can yeah, so these are the costs. So finally, if we want to save Angola, it will cost initially 24 billion, but in this way, we could save 23 billion and then invest it in the same ground because they have a lot of oil and uh, minerals and, and so on. <laughs> and I'm uh, looking forward to work with organizations who wants to uh, bring this project to the next level and uh, with landmine companies and uh, United Nations because it's not really a small project, it's not a one person uh, thing. And I really hope to bring it in the next level. I'm showing you now a video. Yeah, thank you.